Um, well, before before you do the no, hang on, before you do the finger bang, I think people sh should know what this is called in German. This particular device is called in German because it's not called a smartphone. It's not called a mobile phone or a mobile phone. It is called a Handy. So auf Deutsch, das heißt ein Handy. Das Handy, yeah? Anyway, do you want to click us in, Olaf? Yes. So this week, LG announced that they are to stop making smartphones. They're going to pull out of smartphones altogether. And I want to talk a little bit about that today. I have an LG V40 here. And I'm a big, big fan of LG smartphones. Now to explain why, we sort of need to go back to 2015, where this LG 40 did not exist. In fact, there were no real kind of um, smartphones that were sort of pitched as sounding really good. So that meant that if you wanted to get good sound on the go, out in the street, on a bus, on a train, on a plane, you needed something called a digital audio player or a portable player. Now, my first portable player was, look at this little guy. I am holding in my hand an Astell and Kern AK100. This is the OG that really sort of kick-started the portable player market. Now, the disadvantage of this player is it only plays files stored either on the internal memory or on micro SD cards inserted into the bottom. And for me in 2015, I was just getting into streaming. Tidal had just launched, I think, and Spotify was a thing. So a portable player that didn't do streaming, I was like, nah. So I ended up buying a Sony ZX-1 DAP. And I bought that because it ran Android, like a phone version of Android. So you could install apps through the Google Play Store. So I could install Spotify, Tidal, um, I can't remember what else I used back then. Maybe Pandora, because Pandora was in Australia for a while. And because the headphone output and the DAC, well, it's kind of not a DAC inside the Sony, but anyway, that player sounded pretty good. A little bit thin sometimes. And I liked it so much that I went and bought the successor, the ZX2, and I bought that in Tokyo, which kind of gave it that extra sort of special feel. And that was a heavier piece, and it too ran Android and yeah, I think it had a very long battery life. Wasn't the most powerful thing in the world, but its headphone output sounded really quite nice. And then when I moved to Germany, I kind of got wind of the LG, what was it, the V20. Now the V20 was the LG's second smartphone that featured something that they called the Quad DAC. It was built around an ESS system on a chip. 9218P or 9218, anyway, 9218P I think is what it was. So it had the DAC on the chip and the two volt headphone amp on the chip. And LG had implemented this into a smartphone. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. You know, that a company, a mainstream smartphone manufacturer taking an interest in serving people like me and probably like you who have an interest in better sound quality whilst on the go. Unfortunately, the V20, I don't think was available outside the US, so it's kind of difficult to get. But then in 2017, LG announced the V30, the successor, which also used the same ESS 9218P system on a chip. But this news came my way by way of MQA. And I had a meeting, I think, with Bob Stewart the, the big cheese of MQA um, at IFA in 2017, I think it was. And he was talking about the LG V30, not just because of its headphone output, not just because of its DAC inside, but also because they or he had worked with LG on the, the way the Tidal app talks to the DAC and the headphone output. Because as many of you will know from previous videos that I've made, Android operating systems resample all audio to 48 kilohertz before sending it out of the USB port or 
to the DAC chip. In most cases, I'm sure some of you will be ready to type and let me know if I'm wrong about that. But anyway, the V30 was kind of a really exciting prospect. And I thought I have to get one of these because I want to see how good a phone can sound. So I got one. This is, I still have it. This is my, my V30 smartphone. And I, I've had this for three or four years. And it was so good that it caused me to sell my Sony ZX2 portable player. Because I'm one of those people who just does not want to carry two devices. Some people are fine with that. I'm really not. I want all of my music to be on the micro SD card inside here. So there's a micro SD card inside here on the side somewhere. And I want to be able to play that, but I also want access to the Google Play Store so I can have Tidal, Kobo, Spotify, SoundCloud, and get the best sound possible from those apps. And of course, another key advantage of running Android on a DAP or a phone is that when you're using Tidal or Cobras or Spotify, you get offline content. Now, this is really important for most people around the world who don't have unlimited data plans on their mobile or cell phone contract. So what I prefer to do, and I think what many other people prefer to do, is offline them on my Wi-Fi network at home, which I did this morning on this V40 with a Prefab Sprout album. Offline it and then go out, so I'm not chewing through my mobile data. So that's why I kind of bought a V40 when it came out. I thought the V30 is so good for sound quality and there wasn't really a deal breaker in any other department that I'll just get the V40 because it had a slightly better camera. But the screen was fine, the speed of it was fine, um, the build was fine, the size is fine. And that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, when you've got something that sounds really good and that object is quite hard to find in the sort of product category, i.e. smartphones, you're prepared to kind of forego not having you know, the latest screen refresh rate. Personally, I don't care. Or, I don't know, the notch, getting rid of the notch. I just don't understand all this fuss about the notch. If I had my way, I'd have an iPhone. I think the operating system for me is better. But the iPhone no longer has a headphone socket. And Apple phased that out or announced it's phasing out in 2016, just as LG announced, I think it was the V30. And LG have been sort of running with this quad ESS DAC with the headphone circuit on the same chip, the system on the chip, for the last three or four years, because then they introduced, was it the V50 and the V60? And the V50, like the V40 and the V30, I think also had that special MQA routing from the Tidal app. So you could play MQA Masters and it would unfold inside the phone and you could play it back on those LG phones. The last one, the V60, maintained the system on a chip but didn't go with MQA, they dropped it. But that, I think that was LG's last sort of pseudo flagship phone. Um, and now we know that they're getting out of phones. So I guess that point is somewhat moot. Now that brings us to an issue that I think distracts from the main point about phones like this is that audio files tend to jump on it and they almost smother it to death with love because it does high res. I'm like, no, but you don't necessarily just buy an LG phone because it does high res or because it does MQA. You do it because the headphone output sounds so good. It makes all sources sound really very good indeed. So I didn't buy this because it did MQA. I bought it because it made Spotify sound good. SoundCloud sounded good. It made Tidal sound good and Cobras and everything, even the local files that I run through the FUBAR player also sound good. So you buy this and this is really important actually is when we're talking or when I'm talking about new hardware that I'm excited about, high res is almost like a secondary concern. I want to know 
does the hardware improve sound quality across the board before I start looking at like what it does in terms of MQA or 2496 or 24192 and all that kind of stuff. This phone ticks all those boxes, but it's the headphone output for me that just really ices the cake. No, actually it's not even icing the cake, it's the main meal, isn't it? Now, this week, Marcus Brownlee, um, a famous YouTuber, his channel's called MKBHD. He made a video about the history of LG phones. And he, he was discussing why he thinks they've pulled out of the smartphone market and why they didn't really, I guess, kick goals in that space. And he had this amazing timeline. He went through all the models for the last 15 years and what made them really interesting from a consumer point of view. Not once did he mention the ESS quad DAC plus headphone amplifier system on the chip. Only later in the video did he mention the G8 because some of LG's phones have different names in different territories and it's quite hard to keep up. I mean, like what the hell is thin Q? I've got no idea. Anyway, Marcus Brownie did mention the G8. He did mention, and I quote, quad DAC, but it, it's quite clear that even people like him who review phones all the time don't really seem to care about the sound quality of their mobile phones. Yet many audiophiles do. And we're a small number, which is, you know, we're not enough <laughs> to save LG's position in the smartphone market. To think otherwise is to live in la-la land. Audiophile space is tiny, but I guess I want to just really in a very roundabout way, salute LG for giving it their best for four or five years to make the best sounding smartphone possible. So thank you. Thank you, LG, because you really transformed the way I and many other people listen to music in the streets without having to resort to a, a separate portable player. So what happens now? Well, you could go out and buy an LG phone, you know, to save it for the future. I think that's probably a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. I mean, obviously, if you want one, go and get one now because they're not going to be around for long. Um, but I think the market is shifting a little bit because we've seen a number of dongle DACs launched in the last couple of years. I mean, I've got two of them here. Um, this is the... I think it's the Zorlu Stella or Stella. And this is a USB-C DAC and it plugs into the USB-C port of any Android phone. It will also work with iPhones as well, but with a couple of adapters, which I think make it a little bit ridiculous. I've made a video about that. I'll link to that in the description box below. Might even put a link up here. But, you know, this, this one, and then this is the Helm Bolt. That's got the USB-A adapter. Um, this is also a very good, these are very good sounding. And I think these are slightly better than the LG headphone output. And this week, THX also announced their own dongle DAC, and it's called the Onyx. And it's similar form factor, probably the body's a little bit bigger, I think it's metal casing. Their selling point is that, well it's actually quite interesting because they, th there's an ESS DAC inside, but the analog output stage, remember I've been talking about this recently, the analog output stage bleh, is designed by THX. It's their achromatic audio amplifier technology. So THX is saying that this is the first time they've managed to boil it down into a very small form factor for use with mobile phones. And let's not forget with laptops, and desktop PCs. I mean, just because it has USB-C does not mean it's just for a mobile phone. And I think the usage or the use case with laptops, MacBooks, PCs, that kind of thing, tends to get a bit lost. And the reason why I think that's it, it's important to remember this is because if I plug the THX Onyx, or one of these, into this Surface Book 2 or into my MacBook, the operating system is bit perfect. So I'll get high res all the way up to 32-bit 384 kilohertz if I want. 
and I'll also get MQA. So with the Onyx, it's an, an MQA renderer. So the, the host device, either the PC or the phone, has to do the first unfold. That's important, you need to know that. That's a bit like the Audio Quest Dragonfly. So for example, if you connect the Onyx to this phone, this phone will need to do the first unfold and then send it on to the Onyx. And this is where we kind of hit our first gotcha because as I mentioned previously, almost all Android operating systems resample the audio coming out of the USB port to 48 kilohertz. So that's no good for MQA. It's no, it's no good for high res. It'll just kneecap or decapitate Kobo streams at 48 kilohertz. The only way around it is to use, I say the only way around it, one of the ways around it is USB Audio Player Pro. But as I've mentioned before, USB Audio Player Pro does not give us offline capabilities with Tidal and Kobos inside because the record labels won't allow it. And that is somewhat frustrating. If we cut over to an iPhone, we get the new Onyx, we plug it into an iPhone, we're gonna have the Lightning to USB adapter, then a USB-C to USB-A adapter, like I'm holding in my hand here. And yes, we get MQA out, bit perfect out of a, an iPhone, out of its lightning port, but the adapter situation, I'm sorry to say, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. But the thing is, it's very easy to get lost in the ifs and the buts and the maybes of trying to get high res audio playback out of a dongle DAC. And again, I think this is like a case of audio files smothering the conversation with an obsession with numbers and first unfolds and second unfolds and 24192. When the reason we buy a dongle DAC like this or like this one, so this is the um, yeah, Zulu Stella and the Helm Bolt and the THX Onyx, which I don't have yet. We buy those because they make everything on our smartphone or laptop sound better. They sound better than any smartphone's headphone output, if it has one. They sound better than any laptop's headphone output. And that's true for Tidal, Kobos, but also for Spotify, SoundCloud, any other streaming service, Deezer, Amazon HD. We buy dongle DACs because they make all music that we play back sound better. That is the main meal of a dongle DAC. So if you wanna get into the high res thing, yeah, you're gonna have a rocky road ahead of you, but that's, for me, it's kind of irrelevant. I just want good sound on the go. I wanna be our offline CD quality from Tidal or CD quality from Cobras, eventually CD quality from Spotify. And also I use Plex Amp a lot to pull content from my server at home to my phone. I want these dongle DACs to make all of that sound better. Because let's not forget high-res audio. It's only 5% of all available music is, you know, is, is there for you above 1644 CD quality. Let's not forget this. Like, 95% of streamable music on so-called high-res services is CD quality, and that's great. And then if we add a dongle DAC, that makes that CD quality sound even better. But for me, the hardware is more important than any sample rate or bit rate. That's why we buy these. So now that LG is kind of Pulling out of the smartphone market, I think we should be turning our attention to dongle DACs like this. But there is a possible sting in the tail to come from Apple, who are strongly rumored to be ditching the Lightning port on future iPhones. So maybe the next iPhone model or the one after that won't have any ports at all. So there'll be no headphone socket, no Lightning data port. So basically dongle DACs and wired headphones are locked out which means we'll have to rely on Bluetooth. And as we know, Bluetooth does not, not, not do lossless audio yet. Sony's LDAC gets us close, yes, but even Sony refer to it as a lossless and lossy codec, which means it's lossy. 
So, and that's, yes, it can sound very good, but guess what? There's no LDAC in an iPhone. It's just in Android phones. So then we're back to dongle DACs with Android phones. So you can see how the portable audio situation for people who don't want to go with a second external portable player is, <laughs> it, it, I guess it's lined with wrinkles. It ain't easy, but I hope that maybe this video has pointed you in the direction of a, a, maybe a different perspective. That's what I'm trying to give today, a different perspective on LG leaving the smartphone market and then THX announcing a USB dongle DAC to sort of compete with, if you like, the Helms and the, the Zorlus and the other dongle DACs available. Yeah, that was quite a ramble, wasn't it? But um, yeah, yeah, I think we're done. <laughs>